Mr. Craig Finn of the Hold Steady. Craig, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. So, you're going to be playing in our uh, lovely town of Fairfield. Are uh, you excited? Very excited. Um, yeah, I, I was up there. I actually was up there. Uh, I have a good friend, a friend up there that we uh, I had lunch with. And visited the club a while back and said, like, you know, this seems like a cool place to play. So here we are a, few, a little later. Um, <laughs> got it going on. And is this your first time playing at Stage 1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first time playing in Fairfield, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow, nice. Well, we're going to be happy to have you here. Yeah. And so is this going to be uh, a pretty much an acoustic performance or is it a full no. band? No, it's a full band. Um, the guy, uh, I, with the solo thing... I've been playing in kind of all different, you know, lineups. Um, kind of, I think that that's one of the fun things about doing a solo thing is you get to move it around a little bit. And um, so this is a really spectacular band that I'll have with me. Um, I have Josh Kaufman, who produced my last record, uh, playing guitar. And um, he, um, he he's actually uh, worked really close with me, with me on the solo stuff. And, he also plays with Josh Ritter, and he's uh, co-produced that big uh, Grateful Dead tribute re- record that just came out. And uh, oh, wow. he's got his hands in a lot of things. And uh, Will Berman, who's been playing bass with me a lot, is going to be joining on bass. Um, Will has also does a lot of things, but probably best known for playing drums for MGMT. And um, and then uh, Matt Barrick is the drummer, um, who is best known for playing with the Walkman, but also plays with a lot of different things. So it's actually a spectacular band, and uh, I'm really excited to, to play live with these guys. I've played live with each of them, but not with this formation. So it should be kind of a special thing. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a pretty big uh, spectacular lineup you got there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's really fun to play with different people, and these are, these are re- all really great musicians. So we should uh, have, be able to have a lot of fun with the songs stretch things out and whatnot. And so this tour is in support of your album uh, Faith in the Future, correct? Correct, yeah, which came out in September. But um, So I've done a couple tours on it, and um, I've already started making the next one, the next solo record. Um, so, you know, uh, but I think we'll probably be doing mainly songs off Faith in the Future and my first solo record. All right. And so, being a solo artist, um, you know, as many people know, you were in the band The Hold Steady. Did you find it hard being solo? I know a lot of artists, you know, Michael Stipe famously said that he, you know, was worried about going solo because he was worried that it would sound like watered-down R.E.M., and he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> was any concerns with you wondering that this might be watered-down Hold Steady with some people? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it, I mean, for me, it was very... Uh, no sort of artistic and spiritual level is very rewarding you know because it just allows you to do different things and look at things differently and playing playing with other people changes the way you look at things and um just kind of going through different processes i always kind of was i think it added a lot of confidence to myself as a musician being able to hold my own with a new group of people and also you know a constantly changing group of people um and sort of redefine what I think songs meant to me and what, where songs started and instrumentation started, meaning, you know, I write songs, but, you know, the idea of playing them acoustic one night and then playing with a six piece band the next night, um, and having seen what, you know, how those songs changed and what, what, how they highlighted different areas. I do think it's, you know, to be honest, it's, it's all, it's a difficult thing to, um, it can be a difficult thing for the audience because you have to communicate like this is not, watered down old steady <laughs> this is not second you know this is not half assed or, or you know it's not it's not half baked it's 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 the real thing and uh it's you know i think when people come and see it they they feel that way but it is it is i think there's an education you have to try to give people about what it is and do you find it hard trying not to i guess cave into the fans and play a hold steady song or two at your solo shows i have done a hold steady song or two i mean i think for me the thing that makes it maybe a little easier is i in the hold steady i mainly only write the lyrics mm-hmm. so i feel i feel a little weird um about going out and playing hold steady songs when i didn't you know write it's not like i wrote all of them um there are a few i wrote the music and the lyrics to and those are the ones I feel a little more comfortable playing. But I kind of like it as it's a clean break. You know, I've done a lot of Hope Steady. 
I always say, I was at every, I've been at every Hulk Daddy show. <laughs> so um, I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to do do something new. And, I, you know, to be respectful to the guys in the Hulk Daddy, I don't think it's totally, I'm not super comfortable just doing a bunch of Hulk Daddy stuff. Yeah, exactly, because you want to leave, you know, the Hold Steady as its own thing, and, you know, Craig Finn Solo is his own thing, yeah. so you kind of don't want to mix the two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the Hold Steady is a very special group of people, you know, my best friends in the world, and I want that to, you know, I want everyone to feel good about, about all of that. <laughs> do you find that um, between the Hold Steady and your solo stuff, do you find your songwriting process has changed or maybe even improved? Yeah, I think it's definitely changed. Um, well, like I said, you know, with the whole study, I mainly write the lyrics. So it's some, usually it would, the normal process for that was Tad would have to, a few things on the guitar, and I would I would add um, lyrics to it. Um, with the solo stuff, I'm more likely, you know, to come up with the, with the song, a very simple song, um, you know, just kind of simple chords and the, and the vocals and the story. Uh, I think in the solo stuff, I'm, even more committed to kind of a storytelling type of song and um and you know and then i kind of take it into musicians which like i said are kind of ever-changing and see what comes of it um so uh, yeah the process is different i think i'm uh i think i think yeah things i think with the solo thing things can be a little more wide open and and uh um subject to what happens when we get in the room and I know that mainly you're uh, pretty much a front man. You know, once in a while you'll break out the uh, the guitar or two. Did you find that being solo, you kind of like focused more maybe on like chords and yeah. stuff when writing? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think I've become a better guitar player. <laughs> as a, as a, uh, uh, I've certainly paid more attention to it. You know, the whole study the past few years, we play with um, three guitars on stage, three including me. So there's just two lead guitar players you know on stage in the whole study and it's like i there's just not much i i there's there's not a lot that i add mm -hmm. so sometimes <laughs> i ignore it um where you know in the, in the solo thing i think i'm coming through more and it's more part of it so yeah i i, I put i pay more attention to the guitar playing with the solo stuff for sure and with your recent album faith in the future talk um can you give us a little bit on like who sort of was your inspiration any, any oh, yeah. artist that went into or, into um, writing some of this stuff? Well, I, I, I think it's a lot of... You know, I think, like, um, anything that's storytelling and ly lyric-driven, but it struck me, like, you know, I think, like, uh, um, artistically, the one the one artist that I... I think when, um, when Lou Reed died a few years back, I think when any artist dies, I think, you know, an artist like that legacy you, you kind of look back and and say like god i you know it's natural to go through a period of listening to a lot mm -hmm. and i i was kind of interested in how he um throughout his career just told these stories and didn't have like you know a massive singing voice but uh did so many different cool things with you know just vocals and songs and voice and guitars and words and music and um so he, you know, we read in the Velvet Underground have always been a big influence on me and a, something I've loved, but I feel like uh, more so than ever that was on my mind when I made this record. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, because I, I actually wanted to, meant to have this in the back of my mind to ask you, I know I'm a little bit late here, <laughs> but um, a couple years ago, you got to open for the replacements in New York. How was that? That was amazing. Uh, it was like the greatest thing ever. I mean, that's my favorite band in the world. Um partially because or largely you know one because i love their music two because i'm from minneapolis so <laughs> we got to the whole city got to open for them in new york and minneapolis which is uh which is like i mean is, those are the two places i've lived and it just felt like such an it was such an honor really and uh it felt like full circle i i actually heard about the replacements the first time when i was in seventh grade i was playing tennis with this guy and he told me about him and so to look out uh, in, in the in the middle of the show, I realized we were playing at a tennis court, and I, it, it hit me in the middle of the show like this is all coming full circle. We're at, we're oh, in, wow. <laughs> I'm opening for the replacements at the U.S. Open, you know, the old U.S. Open, the Forest Hills Tennis Center, and uh, 
I told the crowd the story. People seemed to really like it. So yeah, it was it was a real honor. Yeah, unfortunately, I missed the hold steady there, which I was looking forward to. Um, but unfortunately, just the way the subways worked, got us there right as you guys were <laughs> had this big loud feedback at the end. I was like, damn it, I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you saw the replacement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's actually how I discovered. You actually, it was. I was watching an interview. I think it was um, Pitchfork or someone was doing a documentary, and um, they were interviewing Bob Mould. And mm-hmm. in the documentary, they were talking about Minneapolis, and then there you were, and it was you know Craig Finn, and he was you know you were talking about Husker Du and the replacements. So I'm like, all right, this guy knows his stuff. Let me check out his music. <laughs> cool. And that's when I heard Teeth Dreams and fell in love with that. So that's where it all all came awesome. from. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So what have you got planned for 2016 for fans? What can we expect from you? Um, well, 2016, um, like I said, I'm making a new record, and the Hold Steady are playing a few shows, two of which have been announced, um, which are Denver and Chicago Riot Fest. So we're excited about that. Uh, it's the 10th anniversary of Boys and Girls in America, so we're going to be doing those shows. And uh, and then, you know, the rest is sort of seeing, seeing what comes. You, you make plans, and then things also come up. So continue to make music and work on a few other writing projects I'm trying to do and uh, and see what happens, I guess. Mm. And I noticed at the Riot Fest, too, the Misfits are going to be getting back together, so you guys are going to have some uh, pretty good lineups it's there. Be, it's, I, can't wait to, for, I can't wait for that. That's, uh, at the Riot Fest, we did it with the whole city in 2014. It was really fun. They always have such a great lineup. I actually, speaking of the replacements, when, they, when the replacements played, they played at Riot Fest Chicago, their second show. And you know, back and uh, I got to go to that. I went to that just as a fan. So I think it's the only festival I've ever been to as a fan. So um, that that speaks a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to be back. And that's one thing I've always wondered because you know I'm I'm sort of an aspiring musician myself, like everyone else is in the world. <laughs> but I'm I'm a guitarist, and I've always wondered: um, is it hard for you to try and get out to shows? Like, do you try and get out? Like, how does that work with? Um, being a I love musician. going to shows. I mean, I love going to shows, and I still do. So that's one of the things I love about living in Brooklyn, you know, <laughs> being able to walk to shows and, uh, you know, just just have a lot of music around. And I, I you know, there's, there, there's times when you get back from a 30-day tour and you're like, I'm not going out tonight. I can't <laughs> be in a rock club. But, you know, after two days rest, it's like, yeah, I want to go see a band. I, I, love, I love finding new music and... Uh, it's all still really exciting to me. And are any new and exciting bands uh, catch your eye recently? Always. I mean, uh, the record I'm really obsessed with right now, because I was at Shaky Knees and I heard this, it's a festival down in Atlanta, I heard this, um, Julian Baker. Do you know that record? It's no. really cool. Um, it's, a, it's a young woman from Memphis. And, uh, but, you know, I, there's all kinds of stuff. Like, I, there's So So Glows, who are friends of mine, just put out a new record, and it's really good. Um, Someone turned me on to this modern baseball band, which uh, I think is kind of big, but they're new to me. And um, they were they were different and cool uh, in a way. I, I had them. I, I thought it was something different, and uh, when I heard it, I was like, "Oh no, I actually really like this." And do you find that when discovering new bands like this, it's because you're maybe like doing the solo stuff? It kind of opens your eyes to different sorts of music. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that there's, I think. The more you, I don't know, being older and just having spent a lifetime, you know, or what, what feels like a lifetime doing, doing, you know, kind of big rock and roll, sometimes, uh, I don't know, sometimes there's a desire to find different things. Um, um, but yeah, I think, I think just uh, the more you play and the more you play with different people kind of opens your eyes to different different ideas and speaking of playing what are some of your favorite songs to play live off of the uh, the solo stuff uh, I think Newmeyer's Roof uh, Faith in the Future is probably my favorite song to play live just because I think it's, it, it kind of grooves them a lot <laughs> um, I like uh, the last song on the album I Was Doing Fine is a, is a really fun one oh, um, I love that but, song you know, but there's just like you know some some nights some nights you just feel one another one <laughs> you know like uh <laughs> Uh, it sort of just depends how it's going, and, and like I said, with the solo thing, it's a little more free flowing, and um, I wouldn't say improvisational, but it's a little looser. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, you can kind of get more peaks and valleys going um, uh, because you know, just just the, the musicians 
and and the way we approach it is, is kind of looser and, and tends to be really fun. So do you, like, before the show, do you kind of have, like, a general set list idea, or do you have, like, this is the songs we're playing, maybe we'll throw in a little extra? We'll have a set list idea, but we sort of have, uh, you know, it might be, like, at the end of the song, go until it feels like we should stop, <laughs> you know, or something like that. It might, it's not as, it's not, it tends to be a little more open um, than, and then do this four times and stop. And do you find that as a songwriter, there are songs where you're you're taken back yourself? You're like, wow, I can't believe that I just wrote that right now. You know, that's a great line. (laughs) Um, Sometimes you surprise yourself, but I more and more things that I find myself I kind of chip away at things until um, really until the very end, until they're and and to the um, ready to be recorded. So I think you know uh, it's more these days about putting in the work and saying, like, I'm going to work on this song. Like, I know I'm not feeling like it might, uh, maybe inspiration's not feeling like it's hitting me, but I'm going to put an hour into this song and see if I can make it better. And do you ever find moments where you kind of, like, force yourself to sit down and do it, or do you kind of let it happen naturally? Oh, no, no. I'm more and more, as I get older, I, I tend to be uh, right just as, as a um, routine, like, I know I'm not thinking of anything right now. I'm not particularly inspired, but I'm going to sit down with a guitar and start working on something and try to get there. Um, and that's become more of my process because sometimes things don't hit you or sometimes you don't know what's there until you make yourself work. And I think you have to kind of approach it as a job sometimes if you want it to be what you do, what you spend all your time and what you spend your time on. Well, that's a good way to do it. I mean, that's. I was reading an interview actually that that's kind of what Eric Clapton does. He just kind of like puts his iPhone on his amp and just plays, <laughs> and then you know we'll go through it later and be like, okay, I kind of like that, so I'll keep that. Yeah, I think that that's you know I think that there's I think that I don't think you wait. Uh, you know, there's some writer I forget. I think there's a famous quote about this is actually about you know more of a novelist, but I think he says uh, some of us wait for inspiration, uh, but the the rest of us just go to work. Um, and I think that you got to go to work, you know. Exactly, and me and you're putting in the work, man. I mean, you know, you've got the um, fantastic run with the holes that you got going, and your solo run. So I got to tell you, there's plenty of great music out there on both ends. Yeah, I like keeping busy. So that, you know, I think that that allows us to. Uh, I and mean, that's another thing with the solo thing; it allows you to keep busy and sort of work at your own your own schedule. And were you kind of nervous about going out? Um, touring you know were you worried that you know you wouldn't get as much as a response it was you know as opposed to you being with the hold steady well you know yeah i mean i I wouldn't say worried i mean you have sort of different um expectations but you know uh like for instance we just went out with titus andronicus and we were you know we did a support tour and that that allowed us to um play with another band we loved and you know kind of combine forces um I wouldn't say I worry about it. It's certainly an expectation that the solo thing might not uh, draw everyone who's going to come to a Hold Steady show, but, uh, you know, it's, it's another challenge, and, and it, mostly it's just um, a, an honor and a joy to play the music. All right, Craig, and uh, the last question for you is this. Do you have any cool stories to share? You know, you're, you've been uh, <laughs> been around since, what, the, the 90s with Lifter Polar all the way through now. I'm sure you got a couple of cool stories in the bank. You want to share one with the fans? Mm, I, that, that's pretty general. I'm trying to think of a, a good story. Uh, um, it's kind of tough to top opening for the replacements, I know, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I, I'm going to... Uh, I will tell you this, that um, here's here's probably the... Uh, this isn't really a story, but this is a, a good fact. You know, you're talking about Bob Mould and uh, the replacements and um, Minneapolis. Um, and Bob Mould and I had the same guitar teacher oh wow uh, that we you know uh we we went to guitar lessons he's he's he was in more he's ahead of me and, and, <laughs> and was more advanced than me but we we figured out that we had the same guitar teacher and uh he taught not only me and bob but i think dave perner from soul asylum too oh, no so way. uh he his name's chris osgood and i think he might be the true godfather of the minnesota scene <laughs> Well, yeah, training all those great musicians there. It's like, you know, good roster under his belt. Yeah, well, those two guys are both really good guitar players, and I'm not quite that, but at least I, I, <laughs> I hung around and enjoyed playing songs. Hey, don't worry, man. You get there. The hardest part of playing guitar is always the beginning, so. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Craig. Well, thanks for taking well, the thanks time. Thanks so much, Rob. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you uh, June 3rd at Stage 1. It's going to be a great time. Stage 1 at June 3rd. All right. Thanks so much. Have Bye. a good one. All right, folks, and there is Mr. Craig Finn of The Hold Study. He'll be playing at Stage 1, Fairfield Theater Company, uh, June 3rd. Be sure to catch his show. It's going to be a great time. And that's it. Rock and Rob is signing off the air. Until next time, friends, enjoy.